My name is Hattie Thomas Whitehead. And my name is Geneva Jones. Okay. And we're first descendants from London Town. Okay. And um, so, so, so this house is from Linen Town, is that right? Yes, this house right here is from Linen Town on Peabody. It's not the house we was raised in. They wouldn't let Dad and move our house that we was raised in because it was too big and bucky. So this house right here was a smaller house, which is one of the first Jim Walter homes that Dad and had moved from Peabody over here on 1550 East Broad Street. So uh, why was this house moved? They was going to tear it down anyway. And they said this, all the houses that was in Leonardtown, they said they were shacks and sh shambles. They were just, but they were not. This house is solid. She going to tell you about her, her dad's house, what he built. But this house was solid, what dad had brought from over there. Our house that we was raised in was very solid, but the city of Athens told him it was too big, so they told him he had to go after they took our house, gave him a small amount of money, 2,000 plus and change forever, or either acre of land and a four-room house with a carport running back porch. And they told him he had to go. We owned it. And he worked for the fine arts building. Over there uh, at the um, fine arts building, Mama worked for Snelling Hall. And uh, at, they, the at this, all the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And they told us we had to just leave our homes. Well, uh, basically going back to Geneva's father, he had the, um, the wherewithal. He had to, the know-how and the financial wherewithal to move this house from Lennon Town to here and to buy a lot to move it on here. Um, a lot of the residents didn't have that uh, money to do that or, or the wherewithal to know how to do it, but her father did. So he became, he still was a homeowner. A number of the residents that lived over there that moved were not homeowners anymore because it, it had taken them a great deal of time and years to accumulate enough money to buy land and to put a home on it for most of the residents. It was not like they had a whole lot of money. Most of them had made, how much money, Geneva, a week? Mama made over to Snelling Hall, Mom and Baldwin Hall, Mama made $7 a week. Now the men's were more then, like they think men's are more now. The men made $8 a week from Baldwin Hall to the Panos building. So they made a big chunk more than the ladies did. You know, so I'm being sarcastic, but you know, you can take it and run with it. That's the way they did them. Working from early in the morning, mom and dad would leave home, going to the university, working late at night. So with that, it, you can tell that it just took a long time to accumulate enough money to purchase a home. And that, this was before integration, so it's not like you could walk in a bank and fill out a, a loan for a home. I mean. People would get um, loan companies and they would get money, put money together from family members or people from the community in order to buy. But it was um, over a long period of time. So after uh, urban renewal at the University of Georgia, when the houses in the neighborhood was condemned as slum houses and the survey that was done from HUD housing they were allowed to just pay what they wanted to for the property. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's uh, falling apart to me. And that, no. was, that was a long time ago. That was, yeah. in, that was in the 60s. 55 years ago. So dad brought this house. a number, we found out that a number of homes were moved. And one lady that moved her home still is still living and she's 99 mm -hmm. and she's still living in the home. She was a homeowner. That's right. So if it was not, if it was a slum area, the homes could not have been moved. But it was not a slum area. Basically, our neighborhood was targeted. Basically, our neighborhood was targeted because it was like uh, 20, about 22 acres of land and it was prime property from the University of Georgia. How much do you think it, it would, the land would have been worth today? Like how much more? I, I don't know. I don't know what it will be worth today, but uh, what we're gonna have to, to do is look at researchers 
and to see what it will be worth today. But they were not paid fairly back in the day when this happened. Some people maybe got $1,600. Some people got $2,000. Some people got $4,000. They could not move and get another home in that short period of time with no help, no assistance, no one helping, nobody meeting with the community to let them know that um, what the needs were and what, what op options they had. We didn't have options. Basically, they just kicked us out. And if we didn't move fast enough, we had to pay rent. They charged rent. So even with this small amount of money that was given, they wanted some of that back. And they got it. <laughs> I got a, I have the receipt. I have a receipt. My daddy paid fifteen dollars a month until he could get this house stable over here. They didn't give him enough money to get it stabilized. He had to borrow money from a loan company, Joe Cooper Finance, and I have that evidence that he had to bother from them, borrow <coughs> from them to get things stabilized, set up properly, so him and mom and my sister and brother could move in here. I had left and got married, had a baby or whatever. And then I came back, thought I was going, this little baby I had in my hand, I thought I said, well, we gonna stay there, huh? you know, great big rooms. I can put your crib here and we can do this and do that. We came back, it was dead. I said, dad, I said, what's going on? Never thought they was gonna carry it through. They started before I left. I said, I didn't think they was going to carry it through, but they did. When I came back, Mr. Abe, her father, had built that house up there on Peabody. I went up there and visited, and, you know, it was a nice house, very nice house. And, you know, I said, well, they got their house. Maybe we had to move up here on Peabody just to stay in Leonardtown. But then, next thing I know, they had to make them move. They burned houses. That was a scare tactic. Just like the Klamath used to burn things. That was a scare tactic for us to get away from over there. And when they got enough of us away from over there, they started bringing bulldozers inside the house. It, it was horrible. It was um, the University of Georgia's responsibility to get us to move out of the community. All right now. So uh, once they acquired a property, what they, do, what they did was start cutting off uh, exits and entrances mm -hmm. of the community. Mm -hmm. And later on, they started working at 12 o'clock at night, the bulldozers would come at 12 o'clock at night and work through the night. Um, they would push houses down of people that we knew. And then some houses were burned and we saw, you know, some houses were burned down. So it was traumatizing. So in, in with the families not knowing where they were going and where they were going, those that were left had to see this. And in some instances, they start digging ditches in front of the houses. And when we got from school every day, we had to jump across the open ditch, ditches to get home. So we tell this, we want people to know what happened, how we were traumatized. And through, through a lot of pain, and we hope it doesn't come through, pain and suffering that, um, that we saw this occur. And, and we talk about it because we want people to know what happened. And through pain and, agri and adama ad you know, through pain and, and suffering that we tell our story. And, and we don't want it to come through that we are angry, but we, are, we want it to come through that what happened and that we're disappointed at what happened since we found the data. Um, and, and you also want a, a resolution to be passed. Right? Yes. yes. Once we found the data, okay, okay, once we found the data, mm -hmm. and, and the data was um, archived under a number. A number. It was not archived on the Leonardtown, which w what we called it. And there's nothing in the city of Athens records about a community called Leonardtown. We were targeted because the university in Athens somehow made a decision that that particular area was needed because it was prime property for dormitories for students. And if the, the city of Athens had, if we had been paid properly, properly, then we would not have been here today.
talking about this, but they were not paid right. Some of the families had to go to public housing. Some went to stay with people and uh, were janitors and maids. Uh, some never did live as a families again because they had nowhere to go and they had no help. Now, they did have a committee called a minority committee that was made up of uh, so-called black uh, upstanding people from the community, but they didn't live in London Town. No, they didn't. And they were what I call yes people. That's what they were. They were like yes people. Yes people. Whatever they were Whatever asked the to do. Whatever the white man told them to do, yes. yes so they did that and um, not realizing the impact that it would have made on us. So once we got the data, uh, jo Joey Carter came to town and they we got the data and we saw the data and then we said, okay, we got the data now. So we have gone to the city of Athens with the data and, and resolutions that we think are uh, really uh, simple resolutions, not, you know, something that's outlandish, but simple resolutions that we think that we need as a result of what happened in London Town. So as a result of that, we met with uh, council people. We've met um, now with the mayor and we had a, uh, I'll show a demonstration, I would say, at the uh, mayor and council meeting this past Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So the mayor has decided that he's going to put a committee together later on this month to work on these resolutions. What, what we seem like a fair, fair resolutions, so we're willing to work with any, any committee that's put up, uh, put together. We're not dug our heels on anything, any words or anything. We're just trying to say this need to be fair. Hattie, do you want to say anything else? If you do, you go right ahead. I don't mind sharing this time with you because, you know, we're, we're family. No matter where we are, whoever lived in another town, when we see one another, we see a family. And there's no division at all. She, I, go ahead, on baby. I just want to, um, the everyone to know that um, we don't dislike Athens. We love Athens. We do, and we, we love the University of Georgia. Love the university. But we want, we want um, Athens and the council and university all know that it's time to step up and do what's right, because we were treated our. Uh, our relatives and the our community was not treated fairly. And it's time to, to make it right. You know what I, I think about a lot. When my daddy came home and mama said, when him, my dad and her uncle, Mr. Dave Brown, I remember them two going to this meeting that they had, you know, a little meeting they had. And when it came back, I remember mama asking daddy, she said, daddy, that's what they call one another, mom and daddy. So what did they say? And mom, daddy said, we, so I told him I didn't want to move him, fixing up the house and, well, you know, this is where I want to live at in here. This is where I want to die. When I'm, and so they told him Snowball, which they had given him that nickname over there at the Fine Arts Building. They said, Snowball, you don't have a choice. You got to go. Don't even come here thinking y'all got a choice. Y'all going to go. That's it. We, they, and that's what happened. And Cresswell Hall was the first one they started building when Doolittle got rid of all of them. She was the first one. She owned all those houses on that side. And she, and she sold out. So they bored those, those down quick. Doolittle houses, they didn't burn them. But when they got to us, the one homeowners and thing who they was afraid of, they, they were, that's where the fear tactic came in. Started burning. And when enough, enough of us left, the rest of they started bulldozing it down. That was crucial. Slavery. The Atlanta Journal called me, so was that slavery? I quickly said no, but then I got to thinking about it. I said, we about five feet from being slavery because they told us what to do when they go, when they come back, how much to pay us, what, what we can grow. And when the people, the 40% white people around Cloverhurst and from Peabody all the way to Millage, they talking about. Not the, we didn't have no white people in our community. They had, running water, they had public 
They had uh, facilities. We had out those toilets till it couldn't do it no more. And then they told us, y'all got to build this and got to build a bathroom. Daddy went right on and built it. And then they built a room and a back porch and it was sturdy and it stayed. Wasn't nothing wrong. They was doing good. They had worked hard and they thought the University of Georgia was going to stand by them and the city of Athens because Daddy really loved it. We loved it too. But we went to school now. It was eight of us in my house. We went to school, Reese Street. Her daddy took us to East Athens. And then we went to Athens High and the Drexel School. Bernie Harris for her. They took, my, my dad took us to East Athens it, because the school, Mr. A. Thomas. the school See. rezoned this, our community, but they forgot to send the school buses. Oh, they so send for them months, <laughs> they send them. So months, Jesus my daddy Lord. had to take the kids to school. He really did, and we just love him to the, he, and, oh. and when, um, when they finally decided to send the school buses, my daddy applied for the job, but they told him he wasn't qualified. Now, we saw the school buses go by us, and sometimes when we was walking the Reese Street, we had to hurry up and get out of there. They splashed water us. Little children walking. Y'all need to picture yourself. Suppose that was y'all little children, but they was white. We were, um, we had carpenters, we had electricians, yes. we had plumbers, we yeah. had, yeah, mechanics, we had beauticians. Yes. It oh, was yes. a self supporting neighborhood. That's right. It's like we, if we needed somebody to, to do something we knew who who to go to and they would come down and repair it. We had everything that was um, the building of a middle class neighborhood. It was just only three streets. Two was not paved. Vanley and Linden Road. Right, they were not paved. Were not only paved. Peabody was paved. It was Peabody were paved because I think there was is a a a a addendum to uh, the Peabody that go from Peabody to uh, Miller Village. Street now. Back. Yeah. But see, right now, if you go over there, you won't see no part of Leonardtown unless you take us and we'll show you. We can show you where our houses was. Yeah. They may have taken away on ground, but they haven't taken away here. <laughs> it's so, like right under those big tie rises, right, basically? It, it's where the, yeah. Cresswell. Cresswell. Bromby. Right. And it was one Russell. Russell. And then the parking lot. Parking deck. Oh, the parking, Jesus. big old parking deck. Parking deck. deck. <laughs> Our house is right there where the, um, the parking, deck. parking the parking lot. And uh, over there, where we uh, worked out a gardening thing, there's the tennis court they have over there. That's where they build. You got to move because we need a tennis court, which don't <laughs> hardly have nobody on it. They even moved the creek where we used to bring from there that water our garden with. Bring from that creek up at there so mama could wash clothes with. That's gone. They have put it on the ground. They, they, they erased everything they could, but they couldn't erase our memory. We are not dead. We are here. And we are not going anywhere. And Joey Carter is not either. So basically, um, we, like I say, we tell our story because we want to know people ha what happened. Because it happened in plain view. That's yes, right. It did. It happened in plain view. But the things that happened um, back then in the 60s, our parents and the, the uh, adults in the community didn't know how to, didn't have anybody to go to for help. They couldn't go to the city, they couldn't go to the university, and they couldn't go to the legislature, the senators, because they had already le leveraged the senators. So once, once we get this uh, together and we meet with the mayor and the team, we'll see how things work. Hopefully, with us continuing to meet with small groups, I've been meeting with small groups in the community. I've been taking people on tours of Linentown. So once we um, meet with uh, the mayor and this, and this committee, we will see how things turn out. Hopefully that things will turn out differently than it did for our parents in the 60s. Oh, it will. It will.